welcome to the garage. Today, I am upgrading the speakers in my 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn with the base stereo. Um, if you guys haven't looked into it yet, you guys have uh, two three and a half inch speakers up in your dash, a six by nine on the driver and passenger door. And then in the back, you also have six by nines. Um, I've already started on this project. Uh, there's a few things I do want to go over. Um, everything I bought was from Crutchfield. And uh, looking at like what fits my vehicle, um, the three and a half inch speakers, this is what I have in the dash. It's the reference 3032 CFX. And I'll put a link in the description for this. This is what I originally bought for the rear of the crew cab. It's the Infinity Reference 9633IX. And uh, as I said earlier, you have six by nines in the driver and passenger, and also six by nines in the rear. Uh, Crutchfield, for whatever reason, says six by nines wouldn't fit in the front, and it was due to the depth. Um, that's something I'm gonna have to go over later once I show you guys how to pull the door trim off. And I went ahead and already did this uh, driver's side door. So right now I'm rocking the original speakers that I bought for the rear. I'm putting them in the front and I'm gonna return the five and a quarters and buy another set of the three-way six by nines. So if you guys are gonna do this project, do not buy these. Um, buy two boxes of the 9633IX and one box of the 3032CFX. So what I'm gonna go over next is how to actually remove the door trim. I've already started. Um, this door here I still have to take off so I can install the other six by nine. Um, real quick, uh, before you guys attempt to remove these, um, they are not like the fourth gens. Uh, the fourth gens, you'd have to actually go through and pull out all these little like cheesy little rivets and then you'd pick the door up and then out and then disconnect all your plugs. Now with the fifth gen, they did a really good job with this. Um, everything is just kind of, it's got a tab and it just goes inside this rubber grommet. And besides those holding your door on, the only thing that's left is uh, behind this door handle, you have an access cover with one 10 millimeter bolt. And then you have another one down here with two 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, the nice thing about that too is all three bolts are the same size, length, and thread so you don't have to try to worry about mixing them up. The tools I'm using to pull these little access covers off is a small blade screwdriver and then a longer handle, very thin blade flathead screwdriver. And uh, going into this, um, they have a tab here where they want you to, as like a starting point, but uh, where it's at is it's, there's really no way to get to it. I've seen some guys come over the top and come down at it, but it's just like a horrible angle. Uh, I took a very, like I said, a thin flat blade screwdriver and I put it on the angle grinder and kind of notched it and come up underneath just like this, not using that starting point and just work it in really slow and then just kind of pull up. Be very careful to not crease your, uh, your vinyl here and just pull up and this thing comes right out. And it's gonna be the same thing up top. I'm using the same screwdriver, but this time I'm gonna use the actual starting point that they have. Uh, very carefully insert this, and you're just gonna pull down and up. The hardest part is on this right side is uh, a larger clip than everywhere else. So focus more with your pressure on the right side, and you'll be good to go. That clip uh, that I was talking about with the bigger side, is, uh, is right here. So that thing was sitting inside the door like this. So that clip right there is your focus pry point. So screwdriver in, kind of pull it, and this thing comes right off. And that'll give you access to your uh, 10 millimeter bolts. All right, now that we have the three bolts out that are holding it, 
uh, go ahead and set them somewhere that you're totally going to lose them. I like to just kind of throw them. That way I definitely can't find them when I got to reinstall it. All right, up next is now the only thing left to do is to pry this door off. Again, I'm using a pry bar from Lowe's and I taped it so I don't scratch my finish of my door. Uh, I'm gonna set the camera back up and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so with all those tabs popped out, I just pretty much have it resting right now on the latch. Uh, one thing I do is I use bar stools to hold the door. That saves you from having to disconnect the handle. There's plenty of room to work in here without disconnecting the handle or the wiring harness. So I set this stool down. First thing I do is I'll push this through. And then in here, this thing sits in a channel and you just pull this right out. And then set your door on your bar stool. And you can even put a little angle on it too. But there is your factory speaker. All right, so right here is the factory six by nine that we just recently removed from the passenger door. And this is what we're gonna be replacing it with. Uh, key thing I wanna point out is uh, the hardware. So what we removed was four six millimeter bolts. And uh, over here, um, they give you hardware to mount this. And it's just like a arrangement of universal hardware. I didn't want to use any of that stuff. What I found was best because these are a direct replacement for what's going in is reusing the old hardware. The only issue with reusing the old hardware is uh, this washer that's on here focus is uh it's a little too wide for the gasket of the speaker so when this thing goes down and you actually torque this you're actually sitting a little too far for comfort into that speaker over time of the speaker going up and down it's going to wear and possibly damage your speaker so what i did is with the bench grinder i took the factory screws and i ground that built-in washer off of them so now when these things go in, same screws without the washer, plenty of clearance on the speaker. One last thing to mention is the connections. So on your factory speakers, you have a harness that just plugs in and that's what makes your connection. With any aftermarket speaker, you're not gonna have that. Uh, but ordering through Crutchfield makes it easy. They give you the adapter so you're back to your factory connection. There's no soldering or trying to splice wires. The uh, part number for this is 71-050. All right guys, so, so back in the beginning of the video, I talked about how Crutchfield's website didn't actually sell any Infinity Reference 6x9 speakers that they said fit our trucks and uh, messing around with it. The only thing I can think of is the clearance issue with the window rolled down. You actually have just under four inches. And if you come back around to the three-way that I'm about to mount, this speaker measures three and five sixteenths. So one thing you have to do to make these speakers fit and not have these wires rubbing on your glass as your window comes up and down is uh, I'm actually going to zip tie these wires so they're not sticking past the magnet. Okay. 
So I went ahead and zip tied the wiring harness so it's sitting not past the magnet. And one other thing I want to show you guys is uh, on the door as well, I included a zip tie. So on the factory connection, uh, it had a little extra length. So what I did is I folded it through and I added a zip tie. That way everything's quick and to the point. Uh, one other thing to note as well is uh, when these speakers start bumping, you want to make sure this isn't touching your speaker or no part of like hard plastic is going to be touching any of this because as this starts to make bass, uh, it'll start to pick up like a rattling noise. Yeah, so I went ahead and dry fit this speaker with my zip tie connections, making sure I had enough room to be able to hook up this connection, that nothing was rubbing. I took the window up and down. Uh, None of this makes contact and everything's good to go. So before I mount this, um, Infinity actually includes a double-sided uh, gasket material that I'm sure on some vehicle applications, if your speaker wasn't sitting flush, you could use this to shim it. Uh, what I like to use is this clear silicone and this can pretty much be picked up anywhere. Um, it works really great on like metal and plastics. Uh, but before I mount this, now that I know everything works, I'm going to make a, a bead all the way around this, even around the screw holes. That way I'm not getting any kind of air blow by on the speakers. One thing I did is I went ahead and wiped off any of the extra silicone that might have squeezed from tightening uh, the speaker down. Uh, another thing to look for is to make sure your speaker is mounted evenly all the way around. Make sure that it's not protruding anywhere. Um, make sure your connector is not getting pinched. Um, after that, you're ready to install your door panel. First thing I would do is connect the harness into its connection port. Then I would take this, uh, I would fish it through the hole. You're going to make sure this gets inside that channel and you're gonna repeat the process of pushing all these little quick connects back in and you're gonna add your three bolts and you're done. Um, the process is the same in the rear as well, but uh, for tonight, I'm gonna have to reinstall my factory six by nines uh, just because I'm gonna have to return those five and a quarters. Now that we know the infinity three ways will fit in the front. In the club, we can't really rock. Still the same, and I made a million for pop. Cause to the land that I IP, I'm a juggernaut. There's yet another thing I want to bring up. So I have everything back together. I have the, uh, the three bolts in, the covers on. Uh, one thing I will say when I put this thing back on, I thought I did something wrong. Um, this bottom whole trim was completely loose. And I thought like maybe those tabs were one time use that we had popped off earlier. Uh, I went around with my hand. You actually have to hit these things pretty good. Once you hit them, they lock in and you can actually hear them snap the same way they came out. But these, this is completely tight now. And uh, I actually had to go back and do it to the driver's side as well. But uh, everything's back in action. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys so I, I had already replaced these three and a half inch speakers in here, but I'm gonna show you guys how to remove this cover so you guys can see it as well. Um, I'm using that same long flat blade screwdriver that's thin down, and I'm gonna go at it and try to get under it like this. And I'm gonna hold it and come around with a thicker one and just lightly pry. So with this removed, this is how you gain access. Um, one thing I do want to note with the Infinity speaker is uh, these tabs. You have to actually, I used uh, snips and I had to trim it. Uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in on that and get you guys a better look at what that looks like. So this is what the Infinity speaker looks like mounted. Um, those tabs I was talking about trimming are actually these tabs. Um, this speaker, even though it looks symmetrical, this can only be mounted in here one way. And uh, that plastic in the back, I'll try to get a pointer here. This plastic right here is what was causing me to have to trim it. And I would rather trim the metal tab on the speaker than my factory 
uh, tab here. So with the little bit of trimming right there, these things fit right in. And again, I used the factory hardware that was already here. And uh, these ones did not have to be modified like the previous. Well, that's a wrap on the install for tonight. Um, one thing that led me on to the Infinity Reference speakers is uh, I did a little bit of speaker homework on YouTube and what I found is with Infinity speakers, they have one of the highest decibel ratings. Uh, I want to say they were 93. Most aftermarket speakers are anywhere like in the low 80s. Um, and so for someone like me, what I was trying to do with my truck is upgrade my factory speakers and I was using my factory head unit. Um, and with that being said, is like where I used to keep my volume control around 20 for driving. If you were to put a lower decibel speaker in, your volume would have to go higher to compensate it. So where I used to be at at 20, I would probably be closer to 30. Um, with these speakers, they they need little power with that rating being so high. They're just a very well composed, efficient speaker. But that's one of the top reasons why I picked the Infinity speakers. Uh, moving forward, uh, probably this winter, I'm actually going to try to um, keep my eyes open for the Alpine factory speaker that would get mounted under the seat. And I wanna put an amp in. And with the Infinity reference, you have a lot of room to grow. So with factory applications, um, you're gonna notice the most bang for your buck but you also have the room to grow into a larger sound system if that's something you guys were looking at doing. Um, I will say, if you guys have any questions, follow us on Instagram at SoFifthGen. Uh, we're pretty active on there, so if you guys drop a comment or a like, um, we could answer any questions you might have. All right, thanks. Take care, guys.